Well, hey there. Thank you for joining me in the laundry room. In today's video, I'll be installing this very, very sexy hot water tank that's hybrid with a heat pump on top. Super energy efficient. Getting rid of uh, this ugly one. Here we got the hybrid water tank with the heat pump in all its glory. It came with these two short sections of insulation. I got plenty more. As you can see, there's an outlet here. There's an inlet here. You can buy these adapters that sit over the top so that you can get, um, ideally, moist, warm air into it. And then um, what comes out is uh, cold, dry air because you have um, a condensate line coming out of here that will get rid of moisture from the air. So anyway, uh, I am thinking about where to pull the intake air from. Today, since I don't have the adapter yet, it's still in a mail. I'm going to just take it from the uh, air in the room. But later on, I think I'm going to duct it either from the bathroom, which would be moist, warm air, or from the attic. Maybe I'll even do a baffle so that when it's uh, summertime, I can uh, go ahead and grab it from the attic. And then during this uh, rest of the year, uh, summertime, I'll be just grabbing from the bathroom. Same for the exhaust here during summertime, since this is going to come out really cold. I'm going to route that into the laundry room during summertime. And then the rest of the year, I'll uh, send it back up into the attic. That is the plan for right now. Now let me show you where we are removing the old tank from. So here's my laundry room. And the hot water tank is back here. So it's inside of a very small space, which is not large enough for the um, heat pump itself, because the heat pump needs plenty of air. So I have some baffles here, or not baffles, I forget what that's called, uh, louvers, uh, right there. And then later on, I'll be routing up here, getting air from the attic. To remove this one, I would either have to remove my washer, but, or... The other thing is over here, when I installed these guys, the, um, the heat pumps, I got to remove the forced air unit that was sitting in this closet. So sitting in here. So I removed it, made a closet out of it, but nothing here is screwed to the wall. I'll be able to just take the shelves out and then the sides come out and then the back comes out and then I'll take the hot water tank out that way. Let's give it a go. I have now removed the closet here and you can see the hot water tank. We have for some reason they mixed these up. So on the side here, it says hot and it says cold, but they have mixed the colors up. Uh, red for cold and blue for hot for some reason. And it's coming out of the ground. So this is gonna be a temporary installation here in this temporary house. But I want to do it right, so we have, we're have. we going to switch this out to PEX. First drain it, get it out of here, and then get the new tank in. Connect it with PEX, and uh, since it has a conduit line, we'll have to route that down underneath in the crawl space and into... Um, I think I'm just going to connect it to where the gutters connect in. The first couple of things I'm going to do is to kill the power to the unit. Then we got to drain it. So um, down on the bottom here, you can connect the garden hose and just drain it out. I'll also need to turn off the water so that we can switch this out. I now have the old tank out. So what I'm gonna do is go underneath and cut away this old plumbing and um, attach some uh, picks. We'll get ready for the new install. I was able to get the hot water tank in here, but then I found an issue. As you can see, if I have it facing this way, the cold water supply in comes inside of my closet. So I'm gonna have to shrink the closet 
And um, the reason why I have to have it pointing this way is the outlet here needs to be facing towards this opening so that it can blow the cold air this way. So what I'm gonna have to do is to reroute the cold underneath to pop out uh, or to be able to connect in here and then uh, just decrease the size of this closet. So one complaint I've heard about these hybrid hot water tanks with the heat pump on top is that they create quite a bit of a noise. Most of it seems to be from people not taking the time to uh, limit vibrations. A couple of different ways we're going to do that. We're going to put this anti-vibration pads underneath. We're also going to make all the connections uh, with a soft or a flexible connection. So it's going to be PEX connection and uh, for the hot cold water in and also PEX connection here for the hot water out that will uh, absorb some of the vibration. So I cut the hole into the bathroom. Hello. And uh, now I'm just going to tape up these uh, this connection so that uh, the air won't escape in there but just go straight through. So here you can see in the bathroom that I cut the hole and I took some zip flashing tape and attached it so that the air won't leak in and of course roll the tape gotta do that i guess it's called wetting the tape and uh, now we'll do the other side i went ahead and added a little bit of double-sided tape underneath those uh, anti-vibration pads that way when they sit inside of the pan here and i move the uh, hot water tank over they will not move around i got it inside here put it on the anti-vibration pads now it's time to make all the connections and make sure that it is um, as straight on on the other side as it should be. Let's have a look. Yeah, looking good from the bathroom as well. Now we just gotta get one of those louvered covers. We'll be all set on the bathroom side. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to assemble PEX if you haven't done it. Here's one connection. So you need to have PEX A to use this kind of uh, fitting. These are the ones you expand. Here's a tool for expanding. You got to put the right size cone on. This is for three quarter inch. I have a different cone that you unscrew and screw this one on for half inch. Then you have just the pipe itself. I mean the, yeah, PEX A pipe, not PEX B. And then you have these sleeves that you put over the end. So you put one over the end, make sure it goes all the way down. Put it on the other end also while I'm going. You just make sure it's seated all the way in there. Let's see. Yeah, it's all the way. Um, let's see here. This is going to be my valve that I'm connecting. I'll open it. And we go this way like that. Okay. So all I do, grab this tool. It expands and rotates so, so that you don't have the grooves all in one place. That's it. Here we go with a quick update. So I have now connected everything. We have cold water coming in from the bottom here, going up to a uh, shower belt, and then continuing into a brass T right here, which you can see there's a drop from underneath. I put five times around with Teflon tape, but it's not enough, so I'll have to go fix that. Uh, in all three connections here and then comes over here into the inside and that's where that is then the hot comes out over here comes up and over just needed to clear the condensate line down into a ball valve that I put too close to the expansion tank so I had to bend the handle out but oh well goes down and then joins underneath it was some uh, horrible plumbing here before but now it's uh, um, picks up at anything that's new then we got the condensate line coming out here uh, I was recommended to put by ream to 
put a T in here with just a loose cap so you can just take the cap off and check that one later on make sure everything is good snake it out if you need to that goes down here and it comes down into what's going to be a drain underneath that joins the gutter however uh, my batteries ran out on my lantern so I have to do that later last thing to connect is the overpressure relief valve right here that one will go down here join this one underneath uh, so they will be uh, both going into the same drain now what I found so far is I turned it on everything is good yeah it does make a little bit of humming noise but not the amount that people were reporting online when they hadn't used PEX they had a rigid connection um, but what I did find was the air comes out that comes out is looking at 51 degrees right there let me take you to the other side so here is the unfinished other side so this is just inside of a closet and it comes out here at 51 degrees uh, probably a little bit colder than that even because that's mixing with room temp so that's just dumping into a small bathroom that's going to be way too cold so what i'm going to do is all these shelves are back here quite a bit so i'm going to make a false wall just pull all the shelves out put a wall in here and then um, make a path for the air to go up and into the attic right here that is uh, one of the ways that ream recommends routing the air is either to the outside to a room that needs some cooling or into the attic space so uh, attic space it is i'll finish that up later once i get the adapters that i need we are back in the bathroom behind the water heater. The water heater is in here. The adapter is arrived, so I attached the adapter, then a uh, starter, a 90 degree, and then connected here this insulated uh, pipe to use. It's actually a flexible one that goes up into the attic. So that got the cold air out of this tiny bathroom. Now I'm going to build uh, two more shelves down here and then set up a false wall here so that it will uh, cover up the um, this area right here and i will then put some short shelves on the front of it just probably cut down these ones so this side is now pretty much done just got to put in one more shelf down there but i ran out of material and i'll show you the other side here on the back side, you can see the adapter right here attached to the uh, first uh, beginning of the pipe. And uh, yeah, then we have the drain line coming down here, going down into the floor. And I'll show you where it comes out. I just ran it in the crawl space. So it comes out right here and just dumps into the underground. Hey, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end on this installation of the heat pump hot water heater. Hopefully we'll save a lot of money using this one here in the future. Uh, coming up, I got a project where I'm going to be emptying out my um, sewer or septic tank and connecting to the city sewer, uh, which they're currently digging down there. And once we do that, we're going to build a, um, a pool in the same area. So um, follow along, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers!